you believe that God has given you a gift? That's that's something I think that so many people struggle with. Do they actually believe in like the core of their heart? Do they actually believe that God has given them a gift to to serve him? And I think far too many people have a hard time figuring out what that gift set is. All right, so right now I'm driving up to see Jason from Above Approach Ministries. Uh, today we're gonna be talking a little bit about what it looks like to use whatever God's gifted you with um, to make that your expression of proclaiming the excellencies of God. You see, for everybody, the Lord has given you something you're good at. Like it, it could be you're funny. It could be your, you know, for me, it's kind of media stuff and being a worship pastor. Um, for Jason, it's just teaching the Bible online. Like God has given every single person giftings. The Bible teaches us that they're, you know, the hand can't be a foot, can't be an eye, but, but none of us can do without that. And that's specifically for the local church. Uh, but it's true in general. Like you have been given giftings that only you have. And uh, part of kind of maturing in the faith is figuring out what is the unique expression that God has given you to proclaim his excellencies to the world. And so I wanna kind of talk with Jason a little bit about that, um, about how he kind of found himself doing uh, the ministry that he's doing at Above Approach Ministry. So go check out his channel after this. Uh, great dude. Excited to hang and set up his studio and all that. So, sweet. So, hey guys, this is Jason. Uh, he has Above Approach Ministries, which is a, a bigger channel here on YouTube. And kind of in the vein of talking about how do you find how God has created you, how he's designed you to express the, the excellencies of Christ. I wanted to talk with Jason a little bit about like, how did you find yourself, you know, going from ministry world to kind of like YouTube world, which is ministry. Yeah. What was that process like for you? Uh, a lot of trial and error, yeah. a lot of leading by the spirit, a lot of needing confirmation, um, a lot of figuring out what I even thought it looked like to minister and to reach people effectively. I mean, all these different factors come together. It, I think it was a progressive a progression as with a lot of things in our life um, God progressively unfolded not just what it would look like or what I'm doing right but how and how to have the heart uh, behind that I think what matters most when it comes to doing ministry in any capacity is evaluating the motives and intentions and the heart and really like understanding your why if your purpose isn't strong enough then no matter what you're doing it's not sustainable and so when it's following God reading your Bible starting a YouTube channel to really get that why locked in, to have it resonate with your personal, you know, desires and your passion for for what God says in His Word, we should be passionate about. Yeah. To really lock those things in um, and get that why dialed in, yeah. I think is what really shifted things from the physical to the digital side of things for me. So there's two types of people, you know, one type of person isn't working hard enough on figuring out what it is they're called to do. The other person is way too stressed out about it. So what would you say to the first person who's kind of um, Comfort is kind of their idol and they're not really doing much man be willing to step out um, If you don't even have the willingness before God even calls you you'll miss out on opportunities to step into something greater that you couldn't even imagine and so I think to ask God to Help you like be okay with discomfort and tension and difficulty and awkwardness mm -hmm. To ask God to remove whatever is in the way of you stepping out and being faithful man That's that's a prayer. He'll answer. He'll answer that yeah, yeah. and then for those that feel so pressured and almost crippled by that self-analyzing kind of mentality where it's like, I don't know if I mess up and then this will happen. And to almost like cripple yourself before you even take a step forward. For those of you that are in that, I would say ask God to give you an appropriate view of what, I guess, the amount of pressure you should have. Right. What's a good amount of pressure? Yeah, responsibility. How do you, how do you actually yeah. discern through that? Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> like you said, trial and error. So for my life... Yep. It has been so much of, I'm just going to, it's kind of like putting out the fleece and seeing like how the Lord deals with that like he did with Gideon. I believe yeah. it was Gideon, right? Yeah. yeah. And kind of putting that out there, testing the waters, seeing that the Lord moves in that way. Because far too many times I've heard people say, I know without a shadow of doubt, 100%, the Lord is calling me to do this. Mm. And for a lot of people, I've seen that not work out. And then for a lot of people, I have seen that work out. And so the only way to ultimately fully know is if you're obedient. And so even sometimes in those seasons where you feel like God called you to do something and you step out in faith and it doesn't work out, it doesn't mean it was wrong. It might have just yeah. meant God was calling you to be faithful in that moment and just testing your obedience. And so mm -hmm. I think for all of us, the we are all called to proclaim the excellencies of God. We are all called to do that. That's right. You've got to figure out 
what it is specifically that God is calling you to do. Now, it doesn't have to be like church ministry. Like mm. it could be a shoemaker. A shoemaker can be an incredible person who proclaims the excellencies of God by the the perfection of their craft. Um, and so I think not, we, we right now are struggling so much with laziness in our culture, but like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, get your butt out of a chair, figure out what God's calling you to do, but then don't feel so much pressure that you're the one pushing forward the kingdom of God. Like mm -hmm. God is in control of his kingdom. He will have his work done. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that God gives us responsibility. It's amazing that he calls us to this and we get to walk hand in hand with the father in all of this stuff. But um, ultimately it's God's kingdom, not our own kingdom. And so right. um, Jason, how can people kind of connect with you online? You can visit abovereproachministry.com. Go to our YouTube channel, check out all the free resources we have, check out our book, join the online church. We have a lot of stuff going on. You can find all of that at abovereproachministry.com. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. When it comes to balancing the pressure, like how do I know I'm not being too comfortable? I'm, honestly, I'm someone that's like, I'm afraid of comfort because sometimes I know like something big's coming. Yeah. How do you balance and discern through the appropriate amount of pressure? As long as you lean on God, like wholeheartedly yeah. trust him in all your ways acknowledge him in the decisions you're making there will be that appropriate amount amount of humility and yeah. dependence as well as me moving forward and doing my part without me thinking it's me i'm going to do what god's called me to while i lean on him as long as you lean on him i think he'll provide the necessary amount of pressure and comfort that is best and most conducive to your growth and walk yeah so guys go check out jason's ministry i'm gonna have him on the channel sometime later just to kind of yeah. do a podcast together or whatever so um check him out yeah all right so i'm back in my studio just want to say thanks again to jason for letting me come out to his house great time got to set up a studio kind of get things ready for his live stream but for us i want to help us kind of figure out what are those things how, how do you really tell what it is that god has called you to do the first thing that you can do is think back on your past how has god used you specifically to encourage other people are you really hospitable. Maybe you're a good teacher. Maybe you're somebody who um, has the gift of leadership or administration or evangelism. What is the way that God has used you in your past to make much of his name and to help his people in his kingdom? The next thing you need to do is ask people around you. Ask them how they've been encouraged by you, how they see God working in your life. You see, you're put into community on purpose. The reason you're in a church is so that you can use your giftings to serve other people. And so one of the quickest ways we could do this is ask our friends, hey, what do you think my spiritual gifts are? And I think the final thing you can do is actually go and take a spiritual gifts assessment test. I think there's a lot of them online that are really helpful. A lot of churches have them as just kind of a resource that they have. But the more that you can get well acquainted with who you are and the way that God designed you, the better off you are at serving God and helping out in his kingdom. Now, don't worry if you don't have the gift of, of preaching or of singing up on stage. Those gifts, though they're important, they're not everything and they're not even more important than other gifts that people have in the church. You see, the, the Bible gives us this awesome picture of what giftings are like. Some He says some people are like a hand, some people are like an eye, some people are like an ear, and all of them are used for different things, and all of them are completely necessary for the church to be the church. So don't get down on yourself if you don't have these giftings of somebody who's platformed, but use your gifting, no matter what it is, to the glory of God. Make sure that you're waking up every morning going, you know what? I want to use my gifting to see the Lord glorified today. And so I'm not going to use my gifting for my own personal gain or selfish gain, but I want to use it for the kingdom of God to serve him and to serve his church. And then another cool thing is as you get to know your giftings, you get to help other people who have that same gift. You get to disciple someone. If you have the gift of administration, trying to figure out who else has that gift and you train them up. The Bible commands us to make disciples. And so Part of your discipleship process as you grow in your understanding of your gifting is helping other people understand theirs. So let me know in the comments. Tell me, what is your spiritual gift? I would love to know and to kind of hear how the Lord has gifted you and how God's using your gifting in the church today. Guys, like this video if you found it helpful. Go check out Jason's ministry and uh, just know I love you and I'm thankful for you. I'll see you guys in the next one.